Alright, welcome back. This is part two of our survey review uh, method video and in this one we want to take the next step. In the last video we talked about breaking a text into its main units and subunits. And now the next piece to do, and these can't happen in reverse order, is we're going to talk about the structural relationships. Again, this is a key new learning for most of, of, of us in this class. Most people haven't been uh, taught to read the text this way. And what structural relationships are, these are the um, uh, logical ways and rhetorical ways in which humans communicate and embed meaning into the text. Our structural relationships are what the author uses to arrange the, all the different materials that he or she puts into the text and the clues that are given to the reader both explicitly and implicitly that uh, show us how we are supposed to actually read what the text says. So this is really important and these are going to be the keys for us to actually learning to dig deeply and richly into the scriptures. So this is going to be a major learning this semester, learning how to find structure and then to, to um, describe it and dig really deeply down to understand how our biblical texts have been, have been written and how the author is trying to communicate uh, with us. Now, you have a structure sheet that, that's in, in the class. I, I would suggest that you um, download that and have access to that during the lecture because I'm going to work right through that so we can go over that. And again, in the textbook, um, whether you're looking at Bible study that works, whether you're looking at inductive Bible study, the bigger book, whether you have Dr. Traina's old book, Methodical Bible Study, uh, or David Bauer's um, uh, monograph, The Structure of Matthew's Gospel, all of these books have a section in which the structural relationships are described. I would suggest reading that material over and over again until it, you, cut, you internalize it. Um, I'll just tell from experience, my, the structure sheet, and I have my copy here, um, I, I received a similar one my first semester in inductive Bible study, and I kept that in my Bible for years, the original one, uh, because I wanted to I needed to remember what the different structures are now, having done IBS now, again, continually since 1991, um, I can see structure really quickly. Uh, but this semester, a lot of times it's going to be learn, it's going to be a lot of maybe some frustration, but keep practicing, keep asking yourself, is this structure here? Now, first of all, we have a whole list of structures. You're not going to find every structure in every text. The rule of thumb here is you're going to find recurrences, and recurrences are the easiest structure to find. Those are things, um, ideas, words, patterns that repeat multiple times. Uh, now, besides recurrences, you want to try to find in each survey that you do three to four major structures that are present. Okay. Now, I said major structures because structure works at all levels. Those, those verses have structure, paragraphs have structure, chapters have structure, uh, major divisions within a book have structure, whole books have structure. When we talk about major structure at the survey level, whatever you're surveying, so if you're doing a whole book, you're going to look for structures that connect the main units of the book. If you're doing a smaller section of of scripture, say just maybe parts of a chapter, you're looking for the structures that again connect the main units within that section. So if we go back to our, um, uh, um, our, our chart from last time and let's say that we have a, a scripture again that has uh, three pieces, has three main units. Um, the first and the last main units are relatively short and the second main unit is really is is the bulk of the text so let's say that we have um, let's just say we have 12 verses first unit is verses 1 to 2 the third unit is verses 10 to 12 you know just making these up and I don't have any particular text in mind just showing you by an example then the middle section is verses 3 to 9 okay um, major structures in this case are going to be structures that connect the main units. So a major structure either works in between two or more main units or controls 50% of the material. This is important because otherwise you're going to be finding um, 
fragments all over the place of little structures that only work at maybe a verse level when what we're looking for is we want to ask ourselves what are the big structures that connect our biggest units. Again, this is going to become clear as we move through the semester, but this is a key principle. A major structure either connects two main units or controls 50% of the material. So the 50% rule would be if we found a structure, let's say that uh, the word beautiful recurs seven times at different places in this middle section. Would this be a major structure? Um, well, the answer is going to be yes, because in this case, though this only recurs within a major unit, this major unit, because it's verses 3 to 9 of 12 verses, that is more than 50% of the whole, so this would be a major structure. Now, what if the same thing happened here over these three verses? Let's say there's a recurrence of uh, the word abundance in this third section. Now, that's significant at some level, so you might want to make notes of it, but note it's not a major structure because it only happens within a small main unit. So a major structure is if something happens between two or more units or with over 50% or if one of your main units is over 50% of the text. Now let's give another example. Let's say so we had beautiful clustered here. That's a major structure. Abundance clustered here, that isn't a major structure. And let's say then we have a word, let's say that we have um, the word creation. Happens here once, happens here uh, two different times, and then it happens over here three times. Guess what? That's a major structure because why? It's recurred in all major units. Okay, so that's a key principle. Your major structures connect or work within two or more units or control 50% of the material. Okay, and I also illustrate what recurrence is. Recurrence is when you have something that repeats multiple times. And that could be synonyms also, or it can be uh, places, events, but it's something, it's a recurring pattern that you observe. Okay, the next structure, and we're going to do this, these together, is comparison and contrast. This is when an author is attempting to uh, either show the similarities between uh, people, events, ideas, or emphasize the differences. If it's the similarities, it's, co it's comparison. If it's the differences, obviously it's going to be contrast. Let me give you an example of both. Um, comparison. In Matthew's Gospel, one of the major structures for the whole Gospel is a comparison between Jesus and his disciples. One of the things that we're going to see is in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is teaching his disciples on how to make disciples, how to announce the kingdom, with the implication that the disciples are going to model and be like Jesus. So there's going to be an implicit comparison between Jesus and his disciples all the way through the book. Okay? Um, a contrast. Uh, the book of 1 Samuel, especially... Uh, the initial chapters, I'm thinking uh, chapters really 1 to say 7 or 6, um, that beginning part of Samuel, what you'll see is the scenes change back and forth. You'll see Samuel described in really good terms, and then you'll get a scene where it talks about Eli and Eli's sons in which they do evil and do bad things, and so the author is uh, contrasting, this is biographical contrast, it's a contrast between persons, between Samuel and then Eli. And so you'll find that um, in texts. Now some of these things have uh, signals. A lot of these structures are going to be signaled by certain words. And contrast is one of them. And these are included in the, in the text or in, in the sheet that I gave you. If you look at your structure sheet on con and look at contrast, notice that um, I list some English words that can highlight that. Now, obviously, if you're working in Greek or Hebrew, the Greek or Hebrew words would be appropriate. But uh, the English word but um, is a signal that a contrast is taking place. Now, every but doesn't signal a major structure, but if a but is present, that is signaling, um, that signals to us that, there's, that 
that, that something is being contrasted and we want to pay attention to that. Okay, um, I'm trying to keep the videos at 10 minutes and we're approaching that. So I'm going to um, stop this video again. We just went over recurrence, comparison, and contrast, and that the key principle and definition of a major structure, which again is a major a structure is a major structure if it connects two or more main units or controls 50% of the material. If, it's, if it fits those two, one of those two criteria or both, it's a major structure. Again, what that means then is when we're looking for structure, we're not looking for the structure within a main unit. We're looking for the structure that connects the main unit. As soon as that light goes on, you're going to be making significant progress in becoming a really good inductive Bible study student. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.